Last episode, we discussed about flight instruments. Today, we'll be discussing about VOR navigation as simple as possible. If you're struggling to understand VOR navigation, you'll be able to figure it out after you watch this video. So stick around. VOR stands for VHF Omnidirectional Ranging. VHF means very high frequency radio. This is one of the many ways to air navigate and certainly the most enjoyable. The whole system consists of a ground station antenna on an airport and a VOR receiver indicator on an aircraft. What this system does is it helps the pilot find his way through the skies by means of radio signals. Almost every airport has VOR. On the map, the VOR is represented by a hexagonal symbol. It is usually indicated with its frequency and its Morse code identifier. Inside the cockpit, you have your VOR receiver and your VOR indicator. You must have seen this strange contraption at your local airport. This is a VOR antenna. What it does is it sends out a directional signal that rotates 360 degrees every 30 seconds. Now this information is not really necessary for you right now, but think of them as lighthouses for ships. Instead of sending out lights, they send out radio signals to guide airplanes. Our main concern here is how to use the VOR on your end. Your VOR indicator has four main parts, the course index, the Omni Bearing Selector Knob, or OBS, the Course Deviation Indicator Needle, or CDI, and the To From Flag. You may pause the video to familiarize yourself with this. It basically functions like a compass, but instead of pointing to the Earth's magnetic north, it points towards where the VOR signal is coming from. Now, let's do an example. Let's pick Bluegrass Airport, which is about 60 miles away first thing you want to do is tune in Bluegrass VOR station on your VOR receiver. In this case, it's 112.6. On your receiver, you can see two frequencies. One is the active and the other is the standby frequency. We can only change the standby frequency. To do that, turn the big knob for the whole number and turn the small knob for the decimal number. Once you're done with that, Press this button right here so that the standby will switch places with the active frequency. Now that 112.6 is active, our VOR has started picking up the VOR signal. Now let's say you want to fly to that VOR. In other words, you want to fly to that airport. What you want to do is use the CDI by turning the OBS knob until you have a 2 flag and the CDI needle is right in the middle. Now, as you turn that OBS knob, your course index is also turning, right? When the CDI needle is centered, the course index, where it's stopped, will point to a number. That number will be your course. All we have to do now is turn our aircraft towards that course. Take note that the goal here is to have your VOR course index and your heading indicator pointing at the exact number. In this case, it's about 290 degrees, which is about northwest. Keep the CDI centered, keep both numbers the same, and you will eventually reach your destination. To put that into perspective, I know you're kind of confused right now. Let me demonstrate it here in this infographic. Suppose we're flying to this VOR station. First, we must turn the OBS knob to look for that course that we must follow. Only stop turning the OBS when the CDI is at the center. Also, make sure that the 2 flag is showing because we want to fly to that airport, right? With the 2 flag on and the CDI centered, whatever course the index is pointing, you must fly your aircraft to that heading as well. In this case, it's 290 degrees. Once you're on the right track, keep your airplane flying straight by keeping the CDI right in the middle. If you drift a little to the left, your CDI will drift to the right, in which case you must fly your aircraft a little to the right. If your airplane drifts to the right, your CDI will drift to the left, in which case you must fly your aircraft a little to the left. It's as if the CDI will want you to turn either left or right just so you can stay on track. 
The key here really is to keep that CDI needle at the center. Consider it as your highway in the sky. It's very simple, right? Now, another example. If you want to fly away from a VOR, say along an easterly route, simply turn the OBS knob until the from flag is showing and your course index is aligned to your desired heading. From, because we want to fly outbound from that airport, right? In this case, it's east, so 90 degrees. From here onwards, it's basically the same thing. Keep that CDI centered, keep the course index and your heading the same, and you're on the right track. In the age of GPS and satellite navigation, VOR navigation seems like a very outdated method. But despite that, VOR remains in use in all of today's aircraft. It remains an indispensable tool for air navigation which gives pilots options in case GPS fails. In the sim, I can guarantee you that knowing how to use VOR will entirely change the way you play the game. Half the fun of playing Microsoft Flight Simulator is the air navigation part, especially if you want to become a real pilot someday. On the next episode, I'll show you how to keep straight and level flight using the autopilot in the Cessna 152. Never heard of an autopilot in a 152? I'll be seeing you tomorrow.